I want to take a look at a very famous type of calculus problem involving exponential growth. Um, specifically, population growth very often happens at an exponential pace. And we're going to look at this at a, little, at a little bit different angle than you might have seen it in, say, an Algebra 2 class or a pre-cal class. Um, what I'm told here in this example is that in some particular place, the population growth occurs at 5% per year. The population is 1,000 when t equals zero, so the first year that this calculation is made, that's what's happening. I'd like to find the population after 10 years. To look at this from a calculus perspective, you need to tie this to the idea of a derivative or an integral. Notice here, this is the population growth. If you want to reword that in a way, you could look at that as the change in population. The change in a value, in this case the change in population over time, or with respect to time, is going to be dp dt, the change in population with respect to time. If I go back and look at this, it's 5% per year. So notice, I'm not trying to write a ca an equation that's going to calculate the size of the population after a certain number of years. At this point, I'm just writing an equation that represents the change in the population after a certain number of years. So the population changes by 5% of that population per year. So the change in population is just 0 0.05, 5% times whatever the population is at a certain time. Here's the place where I get myself into trouble. If you think about having an equation written in the form dy dx, dy, uh, that would tell you that you have an equation y. You're taking the derivative with respect to x. If you notice here, I'm taking the derivative with respect to t, but my variable is p, not t. This is where you go through the process referred to as separation of variables. And specifically, what I want to try to do here is to try to write this so I have all the same kind of variables on both sides of the equation. Um, and the way I'm going to do that, I've got a dp over here. I'm going to multiply by 1 over p on both sides to get p's on just the one side of the equation. Uh, that's going to knock out the p's over on this side of the equation. So that's what I'm left with. Meanwhile, I've got this dt over here on this side of the equation. I don't want a dt on that side of the equation, so I'm going to multiply by dt and then balance that by multiplying by dt over here. And that's going to leave me with an equation that now has variables separated. My new equation is 1 over p dp equals 0 0.05 dt. That's my differential equation. Now at this point, if you look back at the rest of the problem, it tells me what the population is when t equals zero. I want to find the population after 10 years. This is a constantly changing process. The population is constantly growing. And as a result, I want to find the sum of this constant change over the course of 10 years. Well, if you think about finding the sum of a value over a certain amount of time, you might think of a summation. You might think of sigma notation in an algebra sense. In a calculus sense, as this is happening instantaneously, I want to use an integral. So I'm going to take the integral of both sides here. I'll take the integral of 1 over p dp and set that equal to the integral of 0 0.05 dt. If those two expressions are equal, their integrals should both be equal to each other as well. I want to do this as a definite integral. I've got the information here. t, I'm going from year 0 up to year 10. So I fill in the information for the t variable here. The population is growing over that time as well. The population is starting at 1,000 when t equals 0. So I'm going to have 1,000 down here. And I'm looking for the population after 10 years. So I can name that whatever I want to. I can name that an x. I can name that a, a I don't want to name it a p because I already have a p. So I'm going to call that an x here. And I'm going to solve for that x variable. So you look at this and it looks terrible. But, keep in mind a few things here. That's just a standard integral. I can find that very, very quickly. The integral of 0.05 dt is just going to be 0.05 t. I'm evaluating this between 0 and 10. So I'm going to take 0 0.05 times 10, which is 0.5, minus 0 0.05 times 0, which is 0. And that's just going to be 0.5. So this whole thing 
is supposed to work out to be 0.5. Okay? What that's actually telling you, that would tell you that the population will have grown by 50% after those 10 years have gone by, uh, if it's growing at a rate of 5% per year. Um, so that's the kind of thing that I'm trying to find here. Um, so I'm going to replace this integral over here with that 0.5 result because I've now evaluated that side. Um, so really I just want to find out what's going to make this whole thing equal to 0.5. And remember, at the start of the chapter, all we could do was approximate this. And so I think sometimes people forget that that's an integral that we know how to find. The integral of a reciprocal function is just the natural log of that function that you're taking the reciprocal of. So in this case, it's going to be the natural log of the absolute value of p. We're evaluating it between 1,000 and x. Remember that I want it to be 0.5. So all I need to do here is substitute values in. The population is increasing. Both of these values are going to be positive. So the absolute value is really not going to change anything here. Really, it's just the absolute uh, natural log of x minus the natural log of 1,000. equals 0.5. You can make a couple quick calculations on a calculator here. Um, you can find the natural log of 1,000 and add that to both sides. So that's the natural log of x equals 0.5 plus the natural log of 1,000. And at this point, it really depends on if you need to round or that kind of thing. Um, 0.5 plus the natural log of 1,000 is approximately 7.40775, and this continues. I'm going to leave that value in my calculator. Notice I've got a log equation here. I have what's really a log base e of x, and in fact, you may want to write it in that form. But I have a base, I have an exponent, and I have a result. It should be very simple to flip this into the other form and find an answer. So keep in mind, whenever you're working with logs, if you can't find an answer in one format, change it to the other format. Typically, you're going to get something that works. In this case, I'm going to have e to that power. It's that 7.40775 and so on. So base, exponent, result. And I'm going to take e to that power on my calculator. I get an answer of approximately 1,648.723 if I'm rounding to the nearest, ten, um, the nearest thousandth in this case for the AP people. And so that would be the population in rounded form. Um, again, if you're really talking about population, you're not often going to talk about 0.7 people. So maybe look at that as 1649, depending on the way the question is worded. Uh, but that's the idea of separation of variables, and specifically the idea of solving an equation that has an integral equal to another integral. Typically, you can evaluate one, you can go through the fundamental theorem for the other, and it's going to work out pretty nicely.